Hello, sports fans. This is Ron Allen. I'm here in Las Vegas, a place called Best Billiards with Gwen State and Winnie B's daughter. And uh, we were reflecting yesterday on Johnson City and how pools evolved. And uh, anyway, we thought it'd be nice to tell some stories. I can't, I got to think, I can't re believe that it's been 50 years since Johnson City's first tournament and 40 years since the last tournament. My God. Anyway, there were some great characters in those days. They're not the same kind of, pool players today are not the same kind of people, even the golf players. There's no more Arnold Palmers and, you know, and Cornbread Red and Minnesota Fast. People today are a little different. Anyway, in those days, were a lot of fun and uh, a lot of characters. And uh, I was gonna relate a couple of stories, husband stories. There's this guy called Cornbread Red, and his real name is Billy Burge, B-U-R-G-E, he's from Detroit. He's not with us anymore, he passed away a few years ago, but he kind of got raised the way I did, on a carnival, on the street, and, you know, he did, made his living with his wits, whatever it took, you know, had to fight his way out, kiss his way out, whatever it was, make the money and leave. Anyway, we're in Johnson City. And I just won the all-around championship the year before. It's like 67, 66, 67. And Ed Kelly was there. The term was over. I didn't do no good. Kelly did no good. We both broke. Sitting there drinking. And uh, I'm looking around the room. I can't go home broke. I got a wife and two kids at that time. And so I look around there, there's Cornbread Red sitting over there, and he broke, trying to get money to get home on, back to Detroit. We're in Southern Illinois. And I look around, and there's the other side of the room, there's a friend of mine, probably one of the best poker players in the country at that time. We'll just call him Larry. And he played everything, every kind of cards, didn't play pool very good. So I walked over Cornbread Red, and I said, Red, I said, listen, I've never been up in your part of the country much, you know, and I said, you got some spot we can go up there and trap somebody and win like a thousand? Everybody get money to get home on? It's only about 500 miles up to your home. He said, I do have one over in Ohio. It's about 480 from here. He said, well, we're not win 5,000. I never thought about it. I said, really? I said, can the guy play? He said, yeah, he played pretty good. He played just perfect, though, for you and Kelly to beat. And, and, and I said, well, where, you got any money? He said, I don't have a quarter. I can't get home. I said, well, Larry over there has got a couple thousand dollars. If I talk him into going, I don't know how we're gonna whack the money up, but, but uh, you know, he plays cards as good as anybody. Well, he said, well, the guy's brother plays Jim Rummy with anybody. I said, really? He said, really? So we all got our shit together. And we all got in Cornbread's car. Nobody had a car with Cornbread. We all flew in there. So here we go, and we're packing all this stuff. There's uh, one, two, four of us. And he just bought some new tires, $100 Michelin tires. And we couldn't get our stuff in the trunk. So he had this big tire back there, you know? And he just took that thing out, undid it, and rolled it down a hill. I'll never forget that. That's 40 years. <laughs> he said, heck for the tire. <laughs> we threw our stuff in there. I want you to listen to this, fans. I'm going to tell you the name of this story right now. When the lamb slaughters the butcher. Mm -hmm. That's when I came this true hustling story. All you guys think we just go out there and catch some sucker and be my with money and go home, and giggle, and laugh. Well, here's what could happen to you. So here we go. We go to this place called Lima, Ohio, a little B town. We got like 2,200. So we get two or three rooms, I forget. We got food and everything, and gas. We got about 1,800 left bankroll to play with. So Larry likes the way I play for the money. So he said, you play this guy nine ball tomorrow for 200 games. You got nine games. I said, okay. So next day, we told him, was there a hustle pool? We went and told the guy. He, the guy's named Ted Elias. He went in the pool, so he'll be here tomorrow. So the next day we show up about noon, it was just 
Gippy, he got about one leg just much shorter than the other one. His name Ted Elias. Never heard of him in my life. Now, I was a current world champion on the all-around. Kelly was a current world champion in straight pool, and I got a world-class poker player with me at Cardboard. Okay? And a country town hustling. Who do you like, fans, to win the money? <laughs> so here we go. The guy says, I'll play. I heard you're here to play some pool. I'll play some nine ball. I said, okay. I said, uh, he said, I'll play some nickel a game. Well, in those days, a nickel to me was 500. I never even thought about anything less than, uh, I wouldn't even play less than 300 a game, okay? So we don't have enough bank to play 500 a game. I'd only got three games. Mm -hmm. And I said, I didn't really want to play that high. Ted, I said, I'll play some $2 a game. Okay? I'm thinking 200, right? He said, well, five, uh, five dollars a game, not that much money. You gotta lose 20 games, lose 100. I almost passed out. I said, what did you say? Mm -hmm. He said, $5. Mm -hmm. I turned on a cornbread red. I said, five dollars. You get me come a thousand miles with three people and bring bankroll and play this guy $5 a game? Mm -hmm. And about that time, I heard somebody behind me. Say, said, yeah, that's all that nit bits. And I turned around, there was a big fat lady. And it's his wife. She said, but I'll bet 5000 on him. Mm hmm Funny. True story. Funny. She said, that's what he bet. Well, she said, I'll bet 5000 on him. Huh. So here we go. I said, well, I'll play some tours again. I played the guy about four hours. I never missed a ball. Mm. I never missed a ball that I could make. If I was hooked nicely, you know what I'm saying? But if I could make the ball, I, I, I never missed one. I look down, and I'm 800 loser. I ain't missed the ball. Playing a sucker, folks, a sucker. Mm -hmm. So now, I quit. I tell a guy, I won't move him into one pocket, right? We can't get broke. If we get broke, we're stranded. So he, he says, I don't know nothing about one pocket. So I go to Larry, I said, Larry, listen. Kelly, this guy couldn't be Kelly playing 125 points of straight pool, it'd it take God to come down helping. <laughs> so we give ourselves two barrels, right? Yeah. Betting 500 a game, right? Don't worry about it. The first game, boom, Kelly's got 113, and he's got 12. Going to 125 points. Right, right. And I think Kelly stalled on purpose, like missed on purpose, you know what I mean? because he's 100 balls ahead. Are you right, with me? Right, right, yeah. The guy ran 123 and out. Unbelievable. It's true. 123 and out, and, and I made Kelly quit. Now we got 500 left. Now this is a blow off in our sucker spot. Now Ian wants the guy's brother, and, and Cornbread Red says, that's his brother, that's the guy that plays the card. I said, do you want to play some Jim Rumble with my friend? He said, yeah. Well, he beat Larry playing gin out of our last 500. We all sent for money to Western Union. We all got the hell out of there. I wanted to kill Cornbread Red. That's what I wanted to <laughs> kill him. So now, that, that's that's partial story of when the lamb slaughters a butcher, but there's more to it, and I'm gonna finish it. Just give me a minute.